Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. As you all know, I normally talk to automotive executives or other technical people in the field, but today I'm talking to Clover Appellian, and she doesn't have any connection with the automotive industry. Isn't that right, uh, Clover? I mean, you, you don't work in the auto industry at all. Not at all. What do you do? Um, well, my professional background is philanthropic fundraising, um, and I've worked with all kinds of not-for-profit organizations, both in this country and Europe and Central America. Okay, but you got a hell of a good idea of how to make cars safer for little children or pets that have been left behind in a vehicle. Tell us what your idea is and how you came about getting it. Well, I think the background is that um, I've lived, I'm from Ohio, but I live, have lived in Florida for nearly 50 years and have uh, seen and heard about um, my share of um, vehicular heat stroke deaths, uh, primarily babies uh, and very small children, and of course, lots and lots of um, dogs. Um, and it just finally occurred to me that somebody needs to do something to solve that problem, to make it go away. And um, I think it, it just started with where I was and seeing the problem that needed to be solved. And I decided I wanted to try and solve it. And you did, I mean, and, and tell us what you did. You, you went out and found somebody who you say is like a genius when it comes to programming. Um, yes, I, I had worked um, with my inventing partner here in Florida on some other projects. And then he moved to Boston. Um, his background is he has a PhD in computer science. Um, primarily big data is, is his specialty. And he is quite the genius in, in this with every langu computer language you can imagine. Um, and I called Lynn one day in Boston and I said, Lynn, this is the problem. Do you want to help solve it? And he said right away, yes. And um, he is the designer of the work of the algorithm, uh, which yielded us uh, so far three patents and um, that's kind of where we are. And tell us what this, uh, this algorithm does. Um, it's um, highly nuanced and uh, determinative. It um, will take any input from any sensor that is native to the vehicle um, and translate that into whether there is potential danger for a... Um, passenger that has been forgotten or left behind. Um, and if there is danger, um, it will act on that. And if not, it just stays asleep, I guess. It's, um, I think what they call a passive safety system in a vehicle, like airbags um, or any lock brakes. It's there, but you don't really have to know about it. So, you know, for background for anybody watching right now, there are numerous tier one suppliers, big, gigantic corporations working on the technology to detect if somebody's been left behind in a car or a pet. But what you're saying is your algorithm goes beyond that, that it will uh, determine what is a, a danger to their health. And I guess that's based on the interior uh, cabin pressure of the vehicle. Um, it, um, the algorithm is um, sensor agnostic. Any vehicle, any make, model, brand here or anywhere in the world can take this algorithm and it will um, adapt to whatever is in, in native in the vehicle and read all kinds of sensors, cabin temperature sensors, radar, identifying life on the back row or wherever in the car, cameras that identify um, persons or, or pets, whatever it is. Um, and um, if you understand algorithms, it's lots and lots of tables that say, if this, then that. And um, that's what this algorithm does in lightning speed, of course, to determine if there is a, th a, a, a threat to um, a live being that is still in the car without any assistance or um, means of rescue. 
Right, but you, but yours goes a step beyond because the different suppliers that I've talked to, uh, if they determine that somebody's been left behind in a car, uh, will send a text to the owner's uh, phone, right? But your your yeah. algorithm will actually intervene and start doing things in the car to help anybody that's left behind. Um, yeah, um, we started with that as as our goal was to take the human out of it. Um, we said no human can uh, disable it or work with it. Um, it needs to be there for the victim, for the, for the entrapped passenger, let's say. Um, the sensor to driver, let's say, using um, telephonics or something, is maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. Um, if the driver is out of range, if, if the phone battery fails, uh, there's just too much uh, dependence on something else. And um, as a parent, I don't know that I'd feel um, 100% um, secure in using something like that. And the sensors on their own, um, that all of the these um, tier one people and, and the manufacturers, auto manufacturers are using, they can't do anything except read the data. And that doesn't save the person's life. It will tell you that the car is 125 degrees um, or something, but that's not doing the passenger any good at all. Um, and we just took it to the level that is what I would say, high tech, high touch, empathic to the passenger. We solved for the person in peril. We did not solve to help a driver um, remember something, a totally yeah. different attitude. So, so describe, you know, a, a pet's been left behind, a little child's been left behind, the, the sensors note that the, the cabin temperature is getting to dangerously high levels. What does your algorithm do to intervene to help mitigate this? Once that is established, it, in, it will roll down the windows, maybe four inches. We don't want the dogs jumping out into the street, but enough to get air moving through the vehicle. It will um, uh, start the um, engine to get the AC um, blowing and going. And this is all kind of simultaneous. Um, it will call 911. Uh, it will call the driver or whoever's name is attached to the vehicle back to the car, of course. And um, I think there's a couple of very unique features that are patented. One is a, um, a unique robotic um, shout out outside the vehicle that will call any passersby to the side of the vehicle to intervene as much as they possibly can until rescue can arrive. And in self-driving vehicles, it will drive to the nearest emergency room using GPS. Yeah, that's great. And I, I, uh, you had mentioned to me before, the, the warning to passersby is not the horn honking because people will just walk around past no, that. No, no, no. This is patented robot, robotic voice calling people specifically. And I need to make the point that Everything about this um, system should be standardized for all vehicles. We cannot have one brand doing one thing, another brand doing something else. We have standardized airbags. We have standardized seat belts. We have standardized anti-lock brakes and a million other parts in a vehicle. Nobody has to second guess what the manufacturer thinks they ought to do. Um, and uh, again, the robotic voice would be the same worldwide. Um, everybody in the world recognizes um, the U.S. stop sign. So it's akin to that kind of thinking. Yeah, that's great. So uh, you've got this all developed. You've got the patent for it. Uh, how... How's things going? I mean, uh, ha have you had any success reaching out to the different automakers or the, the regulatory bodies that could mandate something like this? 
You know, they all have um, our patents that they were distributed um, several years ago. The first patent issued in uh, 2018 and the second and third patents were in 2019. The third patent actually has a continuation on it that is even more aggressive and more robust um, than anything. It, nothing is out there just like it. Um, there seems to be a lag in an interest in this. I think there's been a big distraction, and this is just my speculation, but I think there's been a big distraction in the direction the auto industry wanted to take, and it didn't really include this particular safety issue. Um, the child deaths are not a huge number. Uh, since this started in 1998, when we started tracking the data, about 1,000 children have lost their lives. Um, to some people, that's just collateral damage, and um, it's not like the, the numbers for crashes and, and other vehicular problems. Um, but the other thing that we know anecdotally um, is that more than 10,000 people have been saved. There have been about 10,000 or so close calls. How many have been left with um, life-changing brain injuries? This, this is huge. It is a social problem and um, it deserves some thought and consideration. I do think because of what you said, John, that um, everybody is looking at sensors to identify some of this. Um, they're all looking at it now. They just haven't gotten to um, where we started. Yeah. Well, look, uh, I think what you're doing is terrific. I, I love talking to somebody who has nothing to do with the auto industry, who has come <laughs> up with something that could be extremely important, not just in the United States, but the world over. And and Clover, I commend you. I, I, I wish you the greatest success. I hope that this interview here uh, makes more people aware of what you've got available there and that they come beating a path to your door. Thank you, John. I really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you and to your um, viewers uh, this morning and um, welcome any opportunity that may um, evolve from this. Thank you so much.